In this video, I'm going to talk about where I get my bush poles from that I'm using to build my workshop. G'day, welcome to Chestnut Nags Tools from Japan. My name is Stuart Chignall, and this video is part of a series that I'm doing on me building my new workshop. Now, the techniques that I'm using could have indeed would have been used in Japan, but they were used much more broadly than that. Uh, all across the world, uh, from way back into prehistory, even into the, the modern era, into the 1900s, you still saw buildings being built with these techniques in the Western world, and they're still being used in the developing world. But where do you get the timber from? Where do you get the poles from? Now, the poles that I've been using, I got from a firewood coop, and I, I'm not sure that's technically legal, because the wood you get from the firewood coop is supposed to be for firewood. But maybe I'll burn it, just not yet. But I need some more poles, and I could make a trip out to the firewood coop, and I could get you know a whole stack more, but I don't have a four-wheel drive to do that anymore, so I'm going out with the van to get the poles from another source. But I can't get them from here. No, I'm in one of those areas which is sort of wasteland in Bendigo, which is given from the from the previous mining activity we've had here, areas that are given over to kind of you know weeds and rubbish dumping. Uh, and I'm not going to be cutting any trees down, I'm just going to be pruning them. Now this is some species of eucalypt. I'm not sure what it is. Someone's already had a bit of a go at it with an axe, which isn't, you know, too kosher. Yeah. But do you see how this tree has got two stems? Now this can happen naturally, like a, a seedling will just fork and then grow uh, two trunks. But it's more common as a result of, uh, of coppicing. Now it can happen in nature where say a wallaby or some other browser comes along and, and nips the top off the, the growing seedling. Or it can happen when someone previously has cut the tree off and then it's sprouted from the stump. And that's called coppicing. This is the whipstick forest. Everything here was cut down during the gold rush. Everything you see here is regrowth. And a lot of the regrowth you can see is a coppice, um, coppice, 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 coppice. When you chop them off, you get a whole stack of this epicormic growth. So the ones that survive become, you know, essentially trees. And it can be a method of forestry management where you allow this to happen. Uh, because you've got the established root system from the original tree, these these regrowth shoots can grow much, much faster than they would if you were to replant a new tree. And depending on what you're after, you can have either multiple poles or you might come along later and prune off, leaving the, 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 the stalk, the trunk that had the best shape or form. I'm going to take one of these stems and that'll leave the other. This will result in me getting a pole, but it'll also result in a stronger tree. However, since this area is actually in a mining lease, there's a very good chance that it'll get cut down at some point in the relatively near future. So the first thing I'm doing is moving the van away from the tree. Now this is a really small tree, but if you practice the right technique on the small poles, there's less chance that you'll hurt yourself when you do a larger one. And the first thing I want to do is get an idea of where it could fall and which way it wants to fall, and then work out which way I want it to fall. Now, looking at this, the best pole is the one on the right. I'm conf my conscience is calm with cutting this. But the other thing is that even though what, because I've come around the other side of the tree, the one on the left is the better pole, the one on the right is the one I'm going to cut, because see, someone's already scarred it and marked it up. Well, they've scarred both of them, but this one's got the deeper cut. And this is actually, if you are, if you are managing this, this tree for long-term timber, say for something like a saw log, you see that fork up there, that's the one you want to get rid of so that this one grows into the larger tree, the larger log for you know, better timber recovery later. So like I said, what I'm doing is pruning this tree. Once I take the stem off that's already been damaged, what I leave behind will be in the future a stronger, healthier tree. <laughs> you can see it's a lot smaller once you get the get the bark off. 
The bent handle makes it really good control for hewing when you're doing carpentry with, you know, the carpentry axe. It's not so good for this. What I'm about to do now is get the bark off. And in the, in the next video, I'll be showing you the simplest and easiest way to do that. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification. And I'll see you then.